It's technology, Greetings. Man. Greetings and salutations. Uh, it's a good thing Purdue uh, hired Ryan Walters because I heard that school in East Lafayette hired Walter Ryan. Walter. And they're <laughs> tr- tr- got to keep pace. Got to keep That's pace. It. Right. Keep up. Uh, but that was the Jones's. entire reason. That was most of the reason why the hire was made. Uh, it's. Yeah. The, it's handsome hour 194 and are you keeping the count correctly Do you think i right? am keeping track but i'm not counting all of dowd's quick casts or no. the many the the daily at this point basketball beats that are happening oh um, yes yes yeah, they must be on a different presence. that's subscription only i'm assuming because i have yeah, yeah yeah it's on the patreon feed yeah. it's on the yeah um yeah 194 i just have to take a moment because i remember when we got to 100 and we were like wow that's a lot of podcasts we got now we're at 194 now it's almost twice as many almost time to retire is <laughs> Dude, what i'm saying you, you math guys are and incredible. what's great is when we started potting i'm just gonna hit the way back machine we need that music like the like the harp like we're thinking um we started doing it there definitely were no purdue pods and now there are purdue podcasts with popping up all over the place so i gotta say if you're a per- fan of purdue content uh, in the uh, good audio visual form, yeah, uh, it's good. Good times. There's good and yeah. good for you guys who are doing that. Uh, Kevin Spry says 194, one for every download. Kevin, you hurt me with your words. Yeah, <laughs> you don't need to. That's Come that's on, man. that's not nice. That's not just necessary. Not nice. Hurtful stuff. Hey, Kevin, <clears throat> we got some we got some stats from YouTube just recently. Yeah, five hundred thousand minutes. Of boiled sports video content. Every time he talks about watched. it, he he has a different. It's a different. It was five hundred thousand impressions, right. five hundred thousand views, five hundred. No, it's minutes. minutes. It's minutes. I, I'm I really fine with five hundred thousand watches. So let's just yeah. round up. Let's like wrist that. watches. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh. You know the guy in no, Manhattan. You got You're in your Manhattan. Coat. You got the trench coat guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Jason Davenport says, "Can I get the hotline number? My tailgate group has some opinions on improving the show." <laughs> And for those of you who are not aware, leave it to the what, pros, Jason. It, what Jason's referring to, uh, go oh, check out so my good. feed. Uh, you will see a clip from the Matt Painter show this week, uh, where a guy called in, and we should just address this off the top. Called in and didn't just ask, didn't just question Painter's it's coaching tremendous. decisions. He did acknowledge, and I think he thought this sort of absolved him of being a dumbass. He said, "I understand that you're the number one team in the country and you're undefeated, but." We have he some observations. But he didn't he quite say that. He was like, I know it's hard to criticize the yeah. number but one not team in the country. But not and impossible. Like, and, and Peter's like, well, yeah, something's coming. And he spent a minute it. and 20 seconds asking a question. And then and Peter, Peter was doing this, right? He was Responding. I know. He was playing. No, he wasn't even on his phone. He was like, he was you know. Doodle- it, he had like paper. It's, it's like, like straw covers, thing? you know, no, you know, like, um, you know, the, the little papers that cover the straw, um, yep. you know, cover plastic straws. Like he was yep. making an origami swan out of one of them. <laughs> <laughs> then he, then he answered thoughtfully for three minutes. I could never have done that. No, not just imagine. because I don't know as much as Matt Painter, but because I could not have been the civil for that long. But right. also, you know, Matt Painter and you know, the fact that he is a smart ass. Do you, imagine all everything that went through his head that he had let to a little bit of it out. He did a he little, did little, a little bit. He did a little um, bit, but it was all sort of in the tone. Um, uh, is that you oh. and AJ Hammonds in the background? Uh-huh. That, uh, boiler down. Very nice. It is. You can't even right. see me. You're this gonna get. My you're hat. gonna get even less focus from Boiler Dad tonight because he's found a new toy. A toy, exactly. When we used to do this on. Um, oh, we used we, to put the. <laughs> We used uh, um, Blog Talk Radio. Is that what? It was? No, or? no, no. When we were using Skype, I think yes. we found a bunch yeah. of. Fun well, you could put your title to... on the bottom, and that was fun. Well, we have that on here too. Anish apparently took it down, but. Um, yeah, well, when I the, like it where when... I could put my my where my delegation was from. Well, that like, it would always be like uh, Nigeria or something. Yeah, Nigerian that's right. Prince. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Um, so this is the extra handsome hour this week. So, so the uh, the Purdue Boilermakers football team. Uh, made a hire this week. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard. I can fill you in if you didn't. Uh, uh, please, like please. Hired a new head coach. Hired a new head coach um, who's um, – is he younger than Anish? No, not quite. Close, no, not though. quite. Not yet. Um, he's more in Anish's bracket and, than ours. He's right I, there. So I work – today I work from home. And, like, you know, it was a, a, quite a busy day, but I had that lunch hour to watch the uh, the introductory press, press conference. And afterwards, you know, Jay Money, you made a really good point in kind of our um, – in our uh, chat that I put in the, the reaction post. Yeah. Exactly. Um, that was like, you know, you wonder if Marcus Freeman getting the job so young is, like, open the floodgates to – No, no, I put know, that in the – 
I put that in my write up yeah. for that's um, what I thought for yeah, Shepherd, yeah, yeah, yeah. for Shepard. Yeah. And oh, that's right. That's where it was. And so it's like you you hope that he opens the door for that. And if Purdue hires Shepard or Purdue hires Ryan Walters, like it, for Purdue to be one of those teams on that list, oh, that. that's a pretty friggin' cool thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so that just popped into my head as I was, you know, as, as I was writing. Um, and uh, then I looked up Marcus Freeman's age. And just to nobody, I was like, Marcus, I, I said out loud, good Lord, Marcus Freeman is 36 years old. Like to nobody, empty house, awesome. nobody else here. It's like 36 years old. I forgot because everybody else was like, you know, on that border of the 30 to 40. He's like 39 when like Kenny Dillingham, I think uh, Dillingham is like 32. Arizona State Man. just hired a 32 year old. So it's a lot more common than, uh, you know, than you'd think. Well, thirty-two is uh, is a, a lot younger than Jay. He's very old. We've been talking about this <laughs> often on the, on the <laughs> side bar. Take every opportunity to say that it's kind of weird. Ryan yeah. Walter, thirty-six year, uh, thirty-six years old. Ryan Walter is a you know it's a, it's a former converted quarterback to safety from hmm. Colorado. So yeah, it's, I, there was some neat stuff on. Um, somebody found an old recruiting mag from when Walters was a junior, and he was listed. As one of the, I don't know if you saw that on Twitter. <clears throat> he was listed as one of the quarterbacks, uh, and they had Paulus was on there, uh, the the future um, Syri- Syracuse quarterback and Duke point guard. Might, would that be right? I think that's right. Something like that. Uh, and so was I think Harold was on there, and mm-hmm. that's one of the things we're kind of uh, foreshadowing some of the some of the rumors that are going around about offensive coordinator right now. Um, how do you guys feel about uh, – would, would Harold be okay as offensive coordinator for you? Uh, I don't know if he'd be qualified. I need to look at his uh, – <laughs> I need to look to see Man. who his, fa- I need to Gosh, look to see who his family members don't are and what his started. track record is. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah I mean, no, like one of the other names was that ha- that had crossed um, Walter's <laughs> – you know <laughs> that had crossed Walter's um, uh, uh, path was Seth Luttrell, formerly of North Texas, yeah. which would be like a fun former coach, yeah. you know, that can handle you know a high scoring offense. Like that, yeah. these would be kind of fun names. But so uh, somebody mentioned to you specifically, Anish, on Twitter today, Bob Stitt, because of your, your oh, you, shout out Bob a, Stitt. What's Bob Stitt up to, man? Was he the Col- was he the Colorado School of Mines guy? The Colorado School of the Mines. He yeah, was, uh, super revolutionary went, guy, right? And then yeah, yeah and then he to went punt. to like yeah. then he went to Montana, I think. Um, I would love to do that for one season. Maybe coaching high school. Just we're never going to punt. We're going to go on a fourth down every time. We're, just, you know, t- we're talking about Bob Stitt, but it's like you know it. Um, you know, Bob's the, what? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You look, you look at um, the spiritual cousin of, um, you know, Joe Tiller, you know, just passed away this week. Mike Leach, um, you know, all of a sudden, like, talk about, you know, we were, we're saying that, you know, as Purdue fans, you can't really tell the story of modern college football without, you know, at least mentioning Joe Tiller. Well, a central part of that story now, like we are living in the Mike Leach revolution, right? Like, so, I mean, like, for goodness sake, Lincoln Riley is coaching, or I mean, um, you know, coached Oklahoma is now at USC and Cliff freaking Kingsbury is an NFL coach. Right. Like, it, you know, if that tells you kind, kind of, of the impact that like, you know, the Purdue style of things like, and speaking of Bob Stitt, like Bob Stitt is in that line of, mm-hmm. you know, crazy insane offensive minds. Like, yeah, that would be super fun to bring here. Yeah. Well, I, I loved what he said. I, I said this to, yeah. if you turned into the, tuned into the, the quick cast yesterday, my reaction there were, it's funny. I, I felt as balanced as I could be at that point. Like you guys heard, you guys saw kind of the negative version of me, very negative no, earlier in the we day. Never, we never get that. We, yeah. That's never what. So here's, here's, it here's goes, the nut. goes through a level of filters yes. and kind of It's like, goes it's to like bourbon. And, it needs to be triple filtered. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so you got to get put back in the barrel for a while. Yeah. Then he brings the opinion back out. Bring some like, oak. Mm, bring some oak. It. Mm. He's like, that's, I like that more now. That's better. It's better. Go on. No, Go so on. the the problem with high expectations and all that stuff that comes with it, and I always talk about perspective and expectations and all that, um, is those high expectations can also lead to major letdown. So I listened to Babinski. So let me go through my 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 process. Listen, listen to Babinski, and I thought this is going to be a head coach, a lot of experience, 
surefire winner because of all the things. Listening to said. him last week, kind of immediately after yes. Brom was yes. introduced as Louisville. And so when I when I so I know we profiled Coach Walters on Boiled Sports, mm-hmm. but he's a guy that literally, of all the people in our list, I knew the least about, mm-hmm. and that just bothered me. And then I dug in. I told you, I started looking into him. I was like, oh no, I don't feel any better about this as I dug in. Okay. But let me tell you about my further process, okay? And I know I, I had some people before or after after the quick cast. There's some there are a couple commenters that said I was super negative, and I was like, Ooh. "Listen, you don't you don't <laughs> even know. No idea what you're you have no idea. Let's not publish the group chat here anytime right. soon. Let's not do that. <laughs> That's the thing. The reason I don't go public stuff like that is because you got a I don't. It's part of the process. It's part I of the mean, process. Yeah. It's part of the process. But. I told the niche before Jay came on here. Hey, it I turns to- out maybe Ryan, is it so that not every opinion and every first reaction has to be broadcast online? Is that, that what you're saying? That is exactly <laughs> no. That's a great philosophy. You know, what I the- appreciate that. That's what are you talking what about? Seen. How about this you, idea? How about this idea? It's to okay. reflect. It pause like- reflect. It's it's okay, world, especially uh, social network world. It's okay. To not let the world know everything you're thinking all the time. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. There's a couple of things. Well, number one, and I'm a guy who likes yourself. to tell people what I'm thinking. So yeah, but okay. I'm saying you could be better for it. The world could be better for it. Also, yeah. sometimes nobody cares. Nobody cares what you're thinking. That's it. We're all very I mean, insignificant. Like... We're all very insignificant in the world. So yeah, yeah. Well, anyway. not you, not you to me, Jay, and not the uh, <laughs> not the quick cast because when uh, you know uh, when you I've went on the quick hours. cast, you know Holy it was moly. you know yeah exactly we've got a million watchers and sixteen million <laughs> or no it was a it was a thirty eight minutes long it was the longest quick cast basically a, a solo podcast it was uh, you had a thirty eight minute quick cast <laughs> thirty eight <laughs> yeah. minute it was good man it was good content and well it felt like it, I, I sometimes it. i go on there and like especially in the summer or the early season you guys know this i was trying to i'll try to do a weekly thing and i'm like i don't even know what i'm gonna there's this one point i'm working around or this one thing that i've been thinking because i because there's so little during the brown era there was so little information out there right so i there was a lot of ums and ahs which i hate that especially when i watch myself back i'm like dang man i'll tell you what there was no umming and eyeing when I was talking, I was just talking. It was brrr, pretty rapid fire, a lot of stuff coming out. And I was trying to be as balanced as I could. I was trying to be as fair as I could and trying to be as real as I could at the same time. I could not give them the unfiltered thing that you guys heard. Um, but here's the thing that that I want to encourage everyone about. The last, what, 12, 16 hours, whatever, I guess the last 16 hours have been super positive for me because of everybody involved showing a side of this whole process that made me feel much more confident. First off, let me go through. Babinski. Somebody said this on the Golden Black Cesspool. I mean, Knucklehead Central. They said, they said, did you see Babinski's, uh, the way he was sitting, his, uh, what do you call it, body language? That guy looked like he had won the lottery. And that's not a bit, right? He, he had that, you know, Matt Painter talking about um, Braden Smith saying we stole this guy. That's the idea I get from Mike Babinski watching that presser. Like a guy that's like, yeah, this is a good one. Okay. I I do believe in Mike Babinski. I think he's a good leader. I think he's a really sharp businessman. I think he does great things with the way he handles the, the way information flows. Um, but you could tell that wasn't a bit. He was feeling good. And Jay talked about this. There's also some funny stuff with he – and uh, Berghoff. Berghoff, yeah. Those guys get along. But when somebody's in a jokey mood, kind of silly, that tells you that they're feeling extra good. And there was some jokey stuff happening before, which is funny. Those guys kind of getting after each other, you know, poking each other in the ribs a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so so that's the first thing. Babinski was awesome. I thought Daniels was funny and perfect for his last, probably his last official mm-hmm. Purdue thing. Yeah, That's probably. pretty cool. And then, then hearing Coach Walters – and hearing him last oh, night, hitting all the he hit oh all my the sweet spots. Gosh. His his uh, presence so, of mind, his let, situational let, awareness. Let's, is let's a actually use things correctly. Oh and let's actually God. back up for a second. So yeah. we, you know, there were the three different categories that we actually talked about during the last handsome hour. It was the big swings you got to take, which it's yeah. almost all but reported that it happened. Like uh, Chris Kleiman, 
Kalen DeBeer, Dave Clawson, and um, Matt Campbell were pretty like it, it. It is safe to assume that you know uh, Babinski swung there just to see like you know it. It actually. Um, you know, I'm sure that you know Kalen DeBeer is a twelve million dollar buyout, and that didn't it it didn't seem to uh, dissuade him from going and taking a swing at him, which is very cool. So again, you have that top tier of like the the guys that Mike Babinski thinks that he needs to take a swing at just to see, right? Um, because if you get any of them, they're all well established, big name head coaches that does that thing that Mike Babinski got in the first um, uh, press conference after. Brom was Brom left for Louisville officially, which was elevate the program, um, elevate. So, you know, it's talking about it in the nineties, Joe T- and early two thousands, Joe Tiller literally took Purdue from a bottom feeder, big 10 program that it was at the moment into that middle tier, right? What we are now trying to do is take that middle, that, that mini leap into where Wisconsin is into where Michigan state was, where you can do it across multiple regimes with multiple styles for an extended period of time, right? Purdue again, as good as the job we all think it is, Purdue has never had back-to-back really good coaches. So you take the big swing and that does it. All of a sudden, you're there. That's the journey. The second set was like those interesting names. Um, and I think the one that we all settled on that would conti- that would be the same. It would at least keep Purdue in the same place, right? The offensive guy. Proven head coaching um, things, clearly taking a step up, clearly an ascending name, doing interesting things, especially on the offensive side of the ball. I think pulling from Western Kentucky again, Tyson Helton was the clear and obvious choice for all of us. And then there was that home run swing kind of a thing where we are talk centered around uh, Shepard and Jim Leonard, right? But this is exactly where Ryan Walters falls into, where the way that you elevate Purdue as a program is showing that the foundation is strong enough that you can come in, showcase your talents, you know, build different ways, not just the, the, you know, gunslinging offensive football that we've seen Joe Tiller and um, and Jeff Brown do. And that's the swing that Purdue took. Right. And so because he didn't and back to your original point that you were like getting into kind of gushing about him, Walter's hitting all of the right spots. The reason that the first impression, the reason that the, the pre press conference would have been one, let's say if it was Shepard was, you know, on its face, um, you know, we just had more familiarity with him. We knew Shepard. We knew that he was here. We knew the players that were, were in on him. Right. Ryan Walters comes in, has no history for Purdue. And yet, told the story of Purdue football at weaving into his personal story and Purdue's modern football story, as well as I've heard anybody else tell it. So and good. he's been on the job so for good. how many, you know, how, how long did we say 36 hours? Right. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like, that's, that, that's exactly what he, well, the funny thing is you always, you always hear new guys do new guy things with, with like folklore or legend or tradition, whatever they'll, they'll, they'll try to use something and it comes off like it's a little off and you're like, it's okay. He's new. Mm-hmm. His, his usage of tradition, his usage of terminology and his, his references to players, coaches were so spot on and so good. I, I, here's the thing. Brian Newbert brought this up about announcing uh, Maccabee's um, scholarship. He said a lot of these are PR generators and they're kind of, you know, uh, prefabricated um, what events. What, what, how do you say it? It was really well, well put. Better than I just put it. But that was that was so good. That was that's like the kickoff to me kind of starting to fall in love with Ryan Walters. <laughs> and then the next part is like just seeing the way he interacts with people. Generally, you see like not the stuff where he's in front of the podium is like how he's talking to people. There's a lot of that B-roll going around. It's pretty smartly done. And then his, his, uh, you know, written remarks to the press and then his answers to the press, like they were all like, bang, 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 bang. And I just kept feeling better and better and better about it. And so I was trying to figure out, is this me wearing gold colored glasses? Sure. There's a little bit of that. Or is this me thinking, wow, this guy is pretty good. I told Anish, and I said this on the quick cast. I watched like 30 minutes of him talking to the media at Illinois. Okay. And I did not walk away feeling like, yes, on any of that. 
And I don't know what I missed. I don't know if it was my perspective and that's, you know, being down in the dumps and being let down, whatever. But I didn't feel that great. Anish felt felt good. Anish has been on the positive side all, all along. I'll give him credit. I have not. But listening to him, watching him, I'm like, okay, I get it. Let me, let me, let me suggest to anybody, because there are a lot of Purdue fans out there that are kind of negative. Let me give you a little bit of something to think about. A little bit of something to, to chew on. You've got time, number one. There are a couple of things I said to my wife. I said, okay, here, he's got a lot of things to do in the next couple of days. We'll know a little bit about how good is he sealing the deal, keeping guys around. What's he going to do in the, in the um, transfer portal? What's he going to do with the early signing day? That's all going to be made obvious really quickly. And then the type of staff, all this stuff is coming in like the next 10 to 14 days, like before Christmas, before new year's, you're going to know even more about Walters as a coach and as a manager. Right. But let me let me tell you guys something or let me give you something to think about. If your expectations were high, like mine were. And you were let down because you're like, I don't know this guy. His resume is not as good as I thought that we would get as Purdue fans. Let's let's do this. Let's think about this. Walters doesn't deserve you giving him shit. Okay, Walters doesn't deserve that. You can throw it back at Babinski and Berghoff. OK, and I, I think they got big enough shoulders that they can take it, too. But if you want to direct your angst someplace, go that way. Don't give it to Walters. What Walters deserves, if you're a fan, if you're a Purdue fan, what Walters deserves right now, like we were talking about this a little bit, I think um, the idea. Oh, it was in the margin during the quick cast. A little bit of grace right now. In fact, a lot of grace. Nothing's happened yet. OK, so give him some time to get seated, get a little bit comfortable, show you what he can do. Give him some time to go through a season. I mean, goodness gracious, go through a spring camp, go through a fall camp. These are a lot of things. That's where coaches earn their money. It's where they earn their reputation. It's where they start becoming who they are. But it shouldn't, your, your anger, if you are angry, if you are upset, if you are negative, it shouldn't be at Ryan Walters. Ryan Walters did nothing incorrect. Ryan Walters done nothing but have a really, really good career so far for yeah. a young guy, right? I mean, so that's, by the that's way, my suggestion to you, Purdue fan. It, it's what we talked about with Matt Campbell, too, which is like Matt Campbell. It's stunning that he has 12 years of experience, like as a head coach. And he's like, well, what was he, Jay? 46 or 43. Something? 43. <laughs> he's he's one of 79. He's, he's got, got 43. 12 years of head coaching yeah, that's experience. That's nuts. And Wait till he's so, got 20. Eight more years. He'll be 51. He'll have 20 years as a head coach. Yeah, it's nuts. It's insane that Toledo and, uh, you know, Iowa State, and he's made both of those into, you know, various ways of juggernaut. Anyway, Ryan Walters, 36 years old, and he's already been a Power Five coordinator for six years. Mm -hmm. And, that's you know, so we were silly. And that's, so, one thing I of, didn't that's realize, a lot of good stuff in a short time. One thing I didn't realize until after we were talking, and I think after the quick cast, because we mentioned it like those brief Purdue. Um, you know, uh, overlaps that we've had, uh, you know, uh, uh, Brian, uh, uh, um, Brian brought up that, uh, you know, sometimes they were so good against the run. It was probably because in practice, they practiced against a really run heavy team. Right. And every time the big 10 and they're in their non-con, you know, for the first, whatever, seven games, they were kind of going against run heavy teams that were stuck against that. And then Purdue kind of exposed it a little bit. Right. Um, and so that's kind of the benefit of having a dual threat offense going up against his really ingenious defense. But that 35 to three game, that game that really, I think one of the ones on like at the really beginning of Jeff Brown's tenure in 2017 that put Purdue on the map against Mizzou. We're talking about the SEC win. Purdue ran all over them, actually. Killed them. He was not in charge. He had non play calling duties. For that defense, he was co-defensive coordinator, co -coordinator. Name, yep. in name only. Okay. That was his second year, or halfway through his second year as co-coordinator. And half after that five-game losing streak, Barry Odom, again, you know, not an all-star coach, but for this move, I give him a lot of credit. He he was the defensive coordinator and like play calling defensive coordinator. And halfway through after that five-game losing streak said, nope, I'm done. I can't do this. Like I'm handing the defense over to Walters immediately that defense turned around and they ripped through a five game or six game winning streak. And because yeah. that win, if you remember, looked way better at the end of the year than it did at the beginning. <laughs> Walters was a huge, like Walters getting 
the full control of that defense was a huge part of it. That that was his second year as a defensive coordinator at he, well, how old would he have been? Thirty one. I mean, like that's an impressive guy. You know, Mizzou blogs were at that time were writing about, you know, when the transition came from Barry Odom to Eli Drinkwitz, another young 30s, uh, you know, coach that was given the reins of a power. Hilarious name as well. Exactly. (laughs) Um, He was they were saying, like, it's great that we kept him, but like. But we're not. He's gone. Like he's gone soon. Like we. It was like Marcus Freeman with us, right? Which is like we. Like this is a dumpster fire of a head coaching situation. But like we, that guy, that guy, like we all knew him. That's why, despite him being here for the worst er- years of Purdue football, we have such affection for him because we, like, we had that opportunity where we saw the shooting star. Right. 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 And you could see. You could tell. Among the backdrop he was in, how good he was, right? Because he shined. You're like this guy. This guy's pretty special. So, um, and, and, and it's there's, like there's that's what other right there. that's yeah. what other people saw in Walters. And I know that it's not a very comfortable topic that a lot of you know fans like to you know bring up, but also when it's it's a first of all, young black or non-white. Uh, coordinators are never get or like position coaches are never really given the opportunity to be that brilliant cerebral it's it's why we do the joke right which is like the cerebral high iq coach on the floor kind of thing it's really never reserved for people like you Walters. may make jokes like that but exactly no, like I, never leave the white guy you, open you know what i mean yeah, it's I like uh, you know maybe don't you know maybe yeah, leaning yeah. into that bit kind of furthers all of that you know what i mean but like maybe it's a dumb thing to lean into that bit anyway i don't know who does that but whatever <laughs> Um, uh, where was I? Um, but the, the fact that we see all of these stories, that it's becoming a louder conversation point in the general zeitgeist and that Purdue is on the side of things that's actually trying to expand the club, man, can you imagine we would be sitting here and doing the same thing? Let's say the best version of the recycled coach is Dan Mullen, right? The best version. I think we would all be like, Varying levels of uh, okay, fine. Let's see. Yeah, you know, right, right. Let's see. It's better Let's than see. Bill. Better than Bill O'Brien. Right. right. It's better than right. a whole bunch of other options. Like he fits. Yeah. He fits the style. Like you know, he fits the the you know profile, the elevator pitch of Purdue football, and so that would have been a recycled coach. I think and he I, would have been. I think he would have been a poor fit geographically, right? Because yeah. right. of his recruiting base, and that that when you do, and uh, we all start talking about that off of the the site. I was like, oh no, like, like that's the thing. I really started digging into fit mm-hmm. and that, that one part of trying to recruit new high schools and, and those new relationships, that's such a big deal. That's it so takes difficult. Energy. It takes yeah. energy yeah. and it takes not complaining about the good old days because the good old days are exactly what they are. The old days. Like they're not always you, as good as you remember them either. Right. I mean, and you've got to get, you've got to embrace somebody that can grow with what college football yeah, is like a young guy you mean for, like a young guy like, like a young guy who i'd embrace immediate, both of you guys if you're nearby who, who immediately <laughs> catches up. and by the way i saw there are still people looking i, I don't go on knucklehead central but there are people looking for it's ways to not be negative. good to do it and someone i think on twitter said something about i think it might have been in re- response to your comment about him hitting all those like you know purdue g-spots and talking about the den of, den of defensive end and Stuff like that. You may not have used those words. And and and, uh, and someone replied and said, "Oh, he walked into the building and it's written in big letters there." Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. It's the Galaxy ability brain. to store again, like Listen, communications it, part of this. Like it is, it's the ability, it's the difference. Like like uh, Boiler Dad was talking about between, uh, like read out loud like press clippings that you kind of like, we are going to be the den of defense. You know what I mean? Yeah, and naturally yeah. weaving it into your story. Yes, yes. I mean, you know, he, he talked about, and I, who knows if this is real, but again, this is Purdue spoon feeding Purdue fans, Purdue things. Exactly. No, he I'm was like, you. the first time I was aware of Purdue was when I saw Drew Brees in the Rose Bowl parade. And I was a dual threat, nationally recruited quarterback. Oh Again, it's like that, hitting everyone. And it's like, that's who I want to be. And I was like, right yep, when I okay. said, so I'm watching this with, with LBD. Good. And I, I don't go, care if it's true. If that's true, <laughs> Sell that me the is line. ridiculous. If it's not true, damn it, that's creative. Like, I, 
that's <laughs> tell I'll the take story. either one. It was really good. But what that, LA, what, that, right? what that makes you think about makes sense. What that makes you think about is that. Not that he, you know, not that he was really thinking about Purdue when he was, you know, 17 years old, but it makes you remember he's a quarterback. Like it makes you remember that, yeah, he's known for defenses yeah. now yeah. for like the first eight years or 10 years of him playing fo- his interactions with football. He was a quarterback, you know? And so it's like, again, it, and it's to soothe Purdue fans who are like, what, what's this defensive guy doing leading the program? The only two times we've been su- successful is the offensive coach, right? Yeah, but he did. He did. One of the other things he hit, and you didn't mention, is one of the things he did make a point of saying was he was he talked about offense, and he talked about he, he and it, talk about knowing your audience, right? Like like Babinski and Walters both knew to say, "Hey guys, relax about like he's a defensive coach." Like I love that too because I think that is again you talk about how things are done in the good old days, right? Where how Morgan Burke would have hired and just said, this is the guy. He wouldn't have cared, you know, during that press about conference. The buzz. What the buzz was. He would have just said, right. this is who, look, let me have him. And these guys went up there and said, right, we get it. We get we what get Purdue it. is known we for. The, we hear the but, situation. But what you guys say, are all thinking. Yeah. One thing that's fair is, and we kind of talked about this briefly in our little group chat, but like, would you take the same kind of offense the last few years with a little better defense? Just a little oh, better. How about would you be 10 and two this year instead of eight and four? Like the Maybe, same thing that probably. the two things that he's known for are chaos and discipline. Like huh. his, his, and even if you look at the pre Illinois Brom, did he teach questions. Witherspoon to be a punk ass? <laughs> that <laughs> really got when, under my skin. You know what Witherspoon was before Witherspoon what? was a zero. I didn't realize this. He was a zero star recruit for real. He was a zero star recruit. And he turned him into a punk ass. That's he turned awesome. him into a, <laughs> a four star punk. <laughs> Hey, they were. Oh, I good. think what what was it like the two whatever the two like defensive. The, they were the only team other than Alabama with two defensive players up for these national awards, like yeah, the semifinalists awesome. for these oh, national they were great. awards. They're and so, great. what you're hoping is that, win. what you're hoping is that you take this kind of chaotic defense, and you know you you kind of increase the pressure, you decrease those like mind blowing end of half. Those like mind blowing gaffes, like the end of half, like Hail Mary touchdowns that you would give it just a Gosh. three seven points. And you de- Nebraska being able to score in nine seconds after you get a 17 point lead. Oh, uh, we'll come back to Nebraska because we had somebody that was like, there's too much Purdue talk. I, I have that. a Nebraska point here. Yeah, um, good. <laughs> but, but then also like more. Uh, or fewer penalties, like more disciplined, right? Those are the things. Though that's how Illinois was such like made such an instant improvement. Went from the 88th ranked defense to number three, uh, you know, under Walters. The the um, Nebraska point to our Nebraska fans who have been waiting, waiting, waiting. thirty minutes with bated breath to mention Nebraska. One of the examples of his in? schematics X and o, X's and O's. So he made that point where he was like, you know, somebody brought it up you know, whether we're switching to a three, four, like three down linemen, basically. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he laughed and he was like, I, I don't know how to describe my defense, but it's like, it's, he a said hybrid. he's got to come up with a name. I bet he will. It's he's... like a hybrid where there are three down, but one always attacking. There's kind of, it's, it's, it's junk creates defense. chaos. It's junk defense. <laughs> they were, ex- so Scott Frost was expecting the, th- basically a three, four and the entire Nebraska game, he went four down linemen. And so it, Scott Frost was it, confused, is what you're saying. It, it caused them to throw out their entire offensive playbook. That was one of the key anecdotes Multiple. for, like, you know, um, like X's and O's analysts that was like, look at how good Walters is. That makes me, I think it was a story on The Athletic that was done when he was, not when he was at Purdue, but when he was still at um, Illinois. And that just made me laugh. There's your, there's your Nebraska tidbit for the day. There you it's go. Good. Hey, so I have a thought when, when, so I, I've heard a lot of chatter about people saying um, what he did. Walters took Lovey Smith guys who couldn't win in the Big Ten, and he made them into the number three defense in the nation. And let me just – so here, here's my – trying to wrap this around the Purdue package that we have right now, okay? The, the Lovey Smith players were pretty damn mean. I can tell you that defense was kind of gnarly. They weren't very great. But they were nasty. They like they played a mean brand of football. They hit like past the whistle. I don't know if you guys remember that. That's what I took away from that. And they did have some pretty big dudes. It reminded me a bit 
of what Coletto wanted the defense to be. If you, the old guys will remember this. And then Tiller came in and kind of formed it and shaped it. So what I think Walters is going to have to do, I'm sure he's listening to the anthem. I'm sure Babinski tells him this is where you have to tune in. Um, what, what Walters is going to have to do, though, I think he's going to have to move some guys around on both sides of the ball. Simply because one thing that I saw with Illinois when I watched Illinois' defense is they were super active and they were super athletic, especially in space, right? And they swarmed the ball really well. Purdue had a, has a bit of a problem. <laughs> Purdue has a bit of a problem in that the speed, especially in the especially in the the um, the the linebacker. Sorry, you've rattled me really badly. In the linebacker group. Um, is um, is it where J Money, J Money has changed his background <laughs> to uh, uh, Boiler Down and my background? Yeah, that's so, great. Great. <laughs> so we're the same. Sorry, room. is that yeah. distracting? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so I think he's going to have to do some things with personnel. Either go to the pr- transfer portal, get the guys he needs, or move some guys around because it felt to me. Tell me if you guys disagree. I don't think you will. That Purdue was lacking team speed, especially. The linebacker, the second and the third level really bothered me quite a bit. Yeah. This year. I mean, the secondary just wasn't, I mean, more than anything, I think the front was fine. I think the the front seven, like again, good run stopping team. Mm -hmm. Purdue stopped Illinois, like one of the, one of the toughest running teams in the big 10. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, It was the secondary man. Just the secondary was like undisciplined and bit and like, just not fundamentally sound. Right. And that's what, you're kind of hoping he he wants to force things away from the middle of the field and make it difficult whenever quarterbacks attack the outside, right? If you yeah. even look at, I think a fun rewatch for Purdue fans is Jeff Brom's pre Illinois, um, uh, like a pregame like thing where they were at, he was asked about that defense that uh-huh. was kind of at the peak of its defense, you know, yeah. in, the, in the season, and that's that's a fun way to think about like what one of the best offensive minds thinks about, you know, one of the best defenses, one of the best defensive minds in the country. Um, you know, people are talking about like, you know, what happens if you get like 80% of last year's offense with like this new and improved, like, let's even that. say, people let's even, I mean, but literally let's even, just said it, but what top half, what top percent. half of, let's say top half of the big, uh, like big 10 people defense. Is that what we're aiming for? <laughs> top like, half would be fantastic. That'd yeah. be awesome. Like these are very easy benchmarks. We're not asking for like. Yeah, you know. we're not saying. Yeah, they're good. The defense is going to be better. The discipline of this team is going to be better. Which again, not a not a real high bar to clear. Yeah. The, 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 I mean, Purdue lost. Well, they certainly lost Syracuse game due to discipline. Hmm. And I mean, the, what am I? There wasn't there another game where they Penn almost State, they had a lot oh, they of lost penalties. Florida right? Atlantic. Did they? Well, didn't they have uh, eleven yeah. penalties versus Penn State? Or am I wrong about that? I think they did. I think it was yeah, like 11 and, penalties and for towards over the end of the yards. Game. I yeah. think that was the game extending. There was one game extending penalty that then yeah. kind of led to a late score. Yeah. Um, discipline has been a problem. Um, can, I, can, I, can I ask you guys a question about looking back through the prism of what we know now? Because the, the way that the Brom family is being dragged right now, by some Purdue fans. Yeah. Inevitable. It, it's inevitable. And it's also like, it, it's like gaining. People are so eager to be static. Mad at People are angry, right? Like, it but, feels bad to be ditched. That's the thing. Like it feels it bad does. to be broken sure. up with. It does. Like, it that's does. just what it is. Do you feel like, so we, I think we'll know within, let's say, let's say we'll know within five to six days, how bad the academic attrition is. Cause it's rumored. It's going to be rough. If if we hear that it's double digit guys that have flunked off the team, does that change the way you look at the end of the Brom era? It 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 it, it doesn't it's change cha- much of what I think of him, but I, I, I it makes me disappointed that that academically because I, I I you know I know the point here we're talking about football, but like I, I like it when I hear that my school's teams are academically sound. Hey, can you bring up Handel Jones comment real quickly? This is, he's, he's, he's hearing what I'm saying. He's picking up what I'm putting down. 
that one? Why do people yeah, hate? Yeah, and that? okay, Jay, can you hold your thought for one second? Because yeah. this is okay. So, Handel says, why I do actually hate didn't. Me? I had this same question. I know okay, so I know taking, the answer. I know the answer. Okay. He was taking up some. So, my theory is that he was taking okay. up some of the assistant coaching pool, and we didn't use all of it. And okay. kind of a big okay. salary draw was Greg Brown, but I didn't know. So, Handel asked, and I'll, I'll ask for the people that are just listening, why do people hate Greg Brown? Okay. So, First thing, I see a really negative Greg Brom post on the cesspool, Knucklehead Central. It's going to get better, guys, by the way, in about nine, ten months. Um, but right now, it's going to be really lousy. So so I defended. I, I eat, I've eaten a meal with Greg Brom. I, I like Greg Brom. I think he's a nice guy, okay? And so I defended him and said, hey, I, I've met him multiple times. In fact, I met, I talked to him again after the Northwestern game. And it's been over a year since I had talked to him. And I said, hey, coach, how you feeling? And he lit up. He knew exactly who I was. It was so cool. My brother noticed it. He said, that's pretty neat. He knew who you were. I was like, oh, that's cool. I said, we spent an hour and a half together. You know, it was, it was that's neat, though. He, he placed it. I'm a fan of him because of the personal interaction. Okay. I think it's weird. I, I and I, I've said this for a long time. Greg did not know my boiled sports connection. That's important. I I didn't mention it. I didn't ever talk about. I didn't really talk about that as in depth as I have the last week and a half, two weeks during that golf event um, that our friend at PU Fall Cities helped me plan. Um, but I like Greg Brom. I like Oscar Brom. I like Jeff Brom. Uh, I like Brady Brom. I like I like the Brom family. Okay, but there's a lot of. Um, anger a lot of uh vengeance minded well, people right so now. he he was probably one of the people that was like taken aback that at at the folks like uh brian newbert like you know asking him questions like why can't the offense function in the rain right and like <laughs> you know there was like a you know there was like a veiled shot that was like you know trying to get his press credential um pulled which was yeah. funny um because it's like it's not like the purdue media is that uh harsh <laughs> Like, yeah, yeah. no, know, it's not. Purdue, Purdue, Purdue media you know, is is soft. It's and it's, again, it's quite and nice, again, right? Like he, like he should have, like you know, Jeff. So Chris, Chris Jeff Beeler asked, "What did Greg from, do?" I'm going to tell you what he did here in a second. Okay, I'm almost there. But okay? but but Jeff took calls from Tennessee. It's like you you want to compare the yeah. Purdue media to Tennessee? Like yeah. what what are we doing here? So so here's so Greg. So first, Anisha's theory of him taking a spot and a salary from someone else. That's a good theory, okay? And I think it's a good start of why people are angry. But there's more, okay? His role, one of his jobs, he, he kind of did everything for the Purdue coaching staff. He did all the things that Brian and Jeff didn't want to do, and they really trusted him, right? But one of the things I believe, I don't know his official title right now because I'm not looking at it, but one of the things he was supposed to do is really keep up with academic requirements. And so people see what's coming down the pike right now with these – potentially double digit attrition for the football team. And they're blaming Greg not being on campus enough, not doing his homework enough. And then, so it's like, it's like a trickle up. So they're saying, okay, that was your job, Greg Brom, Jeff Brom. That was your job to keep your brother in, you know, on campus and in place. And he was in Louisville too much. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. So that's where the fire is coming from. That's why people are spitting so hard at Greg Brown because they said, I don't really see uh, a mm -hmm. point to what he's doing. Okay. I found it. I found and it then on really top of that, his job, he's not even doing it. Now, here's the thing, though. There could be much more happening. Mm -hmm. But one thing I will say is it felt like many members of the Brown family spent a lot of time at Louisville, especially towards the end there, because they were. It is what I mean, it is. It, it is, is what, what it is. is. And you so know, we can we can go back and revise history and be very angry. And depending upon what happens with this academic stuff, we can hold this grudge and we can be very mad. I can tell you, I, I told you, I think I was the first one of the boiled sports crew to mention publicly that I was smarting from it. It hurt. And the reason it hurts still to this day is because Jeff, Greg, Brian, all the Brown family, they don't love Purdue as much as they love Louisville. And so that's what I said again. You know, that's that's really the hard thing for us to yeah. get our head around. But when you talk to people from Louisville and you read the articles, there's stuff about his daughter out there. So there's some cutesy articles right now that that his daughter wrote a note. And that's why Jeff came back to Louisville. And there's another one that his mm -hmm. wife was struggling through a lot of stuff. I mean, yeah. she lost her mother. They, they, all this is real. OK, yeah. 
Um, there's a real connection to Louisville. Um, I don't think it helps us any dwelling on no. it. Let's freaking move on. I that's mean, the, like, that's yeah, the thing exactly. I would say. Let's let's go. It, like to me, it's um, I you know, and it's funny that actually the only time. So you know, we obviously there were certain players that this popped up about most prominently Milton Wright, you know, through the last six years. Mm -hmm. Um, but it wasn't like an epidemic. It was, it, it, you know, it, it started peaking up these last couple of years, but it wasn't like a constant drumbeat of things. One of the interesting things that I did hear as a kind of common talking point was that it would be easier to keep players eligible at Louisville than at Purdue. And I was like, huh? Okay. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Um, like, I don't, I don't know, but like, that was a, that was a, it, it was a strange coordinated talking point that a lot of the, you know, Rick Bozich's and folks that were like in pet forties that were kind of in the Brom like sphere were talking mm -hmm. about all of a sudden, mm -hmm. um, whether or not that sours you on the six years. I mean, my, um, it's funny. My reflection on this hiring process has been, like Purdue is known for its offenses and its offensive firepower and its history of offensive. Fire. Yep. You know what we're known for? Two guys at this point, two head coaches, two head coaches succeeded at Purdue with offenses in the last 40, 50 years. There have been more than two offensive head coaches that were hired, but there in have fact, been many defensive fact, failures. I, I understand your point, Anish, but there are many defensive failures, right? The and only one that came in with, so I guess, you know, they, like if you count um, Hope, right? I mean, like if, if you count like, you know. Basketball and grass. Hope but, even, but, but even Kept that, it it's like Burtnett was the one that came in like as the defensive coordinator, sure. right? Like he was the one that came in like with the full defensive it's a different background. Era. But the big thing is like, we've had only two successful coaches in the last 40 years, guys. And it's Joe Tiller. And Jeff Brom, like, what are we doing being picky here? And so, like, and it's also, it's so, not necessarily. So don't you feel like, I mean, like, I understand your point. Okay. I get your point. But don't you feel like the, you're smarter than I am in a lot of, a lot of ways, not in like hair stuff. Like I'm really good at that. And beard styling. I'm awesome at it, but everything Dunking. else. Yeah. That's right. Dunking. Right. Dunking. Um, but you have to see the the issue that when Purdue looks to innovate on offense and when they have a great quarterback, sure. that's when Purdue is very good. And so that's what people are tying these things together. And I think it's right to tie these things together sure. because a great quarterback and an innovative offense can be a, a, a field level at leveler, right? Yeah, but, but doesn't it just matter? Doesn't the OC hire – make this this mm -hmm. like yes. this conversation needs to happen yes. yeah. a little yes. more after that higher a week from right now. yeah so so we should end the show yep <laughs> love you guys good night <laughs> <laughs> no i mean the big the the big so the other second big unanswered question especially when you're hiring an assistant coach is that i mean the 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 no like it's one that doesn't get the headlines. The number one most important hire that an offensive coach or that, that any head coach brings is the strength and conditioning coach. Who's your strength and conditioning coach? It, what is your so much time with them, right? When you think about development, it's the guy that's in the weight room, in the conditioning room, like training them for the on-field movements. That's the guy that's spending most of the time developing the players. So the number one most important hire is the strength and conditioning coach. Number two is the offensive coordinator and the offensive staff, especially for this head coach, for, for Ryan Walters. And so that leads to the third question, how much money is there? What real foundation, like how do you know that this isn't a cheapo Morgan, Morgan Burke hire? It's five to six um, mil, right? Six million dollar, a six million dollar salary pool, pool going from assistant salary pool, moving from just over four, I think, and they didn't even use all of that. Maybe it was sub four is what the Brown family used. And it now leaps up to six. That's infrastructure, right? Like that's how you know that the backing is there, and he's gonna, you know, get the, you know, get the pick of the litter, and it's gonna be. You think Coach Walters job. will do a Mel Tucker move and and just like skim some hundreds of thousands off the top for a bonus for himself? <laughs> Shout out to Mel Tucker's agent. I'm sure Goodness that it's Jimmy Sexton. Gracious. Without looking it up. Shout out. By the way, speaking of Jimmy Sexton, shout out to everybody at Knucklehead Central for falling for the Jimmy Sexton special and thinking that we're getting Shane Beamer. You idiots! What are you yeah. thinking? What are you it's doing? All... 
Just look up his agent if you if you want to know where the rumors are coming from. And did he get his contract by the way? Because that's one thing I started digging in the SC boards to see what they were thinking, and they were all just like, "All right, let's get it. Let's get it wrapped up." Let's get the contract. They're not, they knew they're it. not. Yeah, they're not happy because they hired an old Bears offensive coordinator, and as a Ooh. John John Ooh. Shoup, as part of the John Shoup, uh, you know, support group, I think we can all be, um, you know, we can. They're gonna say fan uh, club because that's uh, it's, it's, have, post, some... it's, it's the post Bears offensive coordinator support group. I think we can all. They were all not terribly happy um, with him, but it's like it's the Jimmy Sexton special. So shout out to Jimmy Sexton. I'm sure that he is Mel Tucker's agent. <laughs> Those guys, man, how much are they worth? These good agents that that's it. just scam people for that's it. But you know, hundreds the head of coach, millions of dollars. And, you know, the other the other part of this is I feel over the moon. I actually love this hire. If we couldn't have grabbed one of those top four guys of mm -hmm. kind of all of the other ones, good, go for the swing. Yeah. Now, in the same thought process, like I think Jim Leonard would have probably been a little better. Um, I probably would have preferred Leonard a little bit more to Walters. But looking at Wal like, but I'm thrilled with this. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Just mm -hmm. because going through the same thought process, you're seeing the proven defensive head coach, the guy that can attract a good staff, the guy with the knowledge of the Big Ten. Like again, it checks all of the like rising star, checks all of these boxes, but has a little head coaching experience, would have been nice. But it, Walters hits everything now. So now but it's what is it? Five for five years for twenty million dollars? That's the other part of this, is that he wanted this job. He wanted it because that's five that's years, the old million. that's the old Butler way thing, right? When a guy really wants to be someplace, you're more likely to have success, and that that's a huge deal. Here's the other thing. Here, let me gonna tell you. Okay, so twenty? No, I'm not gonna say twenty four hours. Twenty seven, twenty nine hours ago. Okay, if you would have said Jim Leonard or Ryan Walters, I would have been like, yeah, Leonard. Okay, and now. <laughs> now I'll say, and I'll tell you why I know the guy a little bit more. I know his background. I know the fact that his dad was a QB and he was a QB. And I know the fact that actually offense matters. Now speaking I'll tell you of, why. Speaking of his dad, not that, not to put the onus on the old guys here, not to make your knees hurt anymore, but his dad's uh, not much older than you guys. No, <laughs> no. That's amazing. He's 52. He's a lawyer. Am I getting successful? That right Gosh, everybody in this freaking family, he's a successful lawyer Man. that if, after a successful college football career and has like two, you know, kids and like like succeeding. So, oh, geez. It's disgusting. Awesome. These but successful. I, I nice like people. the fact that Jim Leonard. So I don't like the fact that Jim Leonard would have been bridled with the fact with, with the Wisconsin offensive <laughs> cloud. Yeah. Around his head, ineptitude. Oh my gosh! Can you imagine? He was like, "All right, we're gonna find the next Jim Sorgi." <laughs> Shout oh, out Jim Sorgi. Shout exactly. out Jim Sorgi. Jim Sorgi. No, nothing taken. Nothing taken away from him. I mean, that Indianapolis dude, legend, Jim Sorgi. Legend, legend. If you, I am entirely. Rings. I am dead. Right, I'm a hundred percent serious. If anybody yeah. listening can mm -hmm. find me a Jim Sorgi jersey, I will pay you American dollars for it. I will pay you American dollars US for a jersey, currency. not an insignificant amount of American dollars for a Jim Sorgi jersey. Back I'm sure you can have one show. made. I'm sure you can have no, one made. No, that's not as fun. That's it's not cheating. as fun. That is cheating. Uh, Walters even made mention of this, which I obviously took as a sly dig at Iowa, which is because I, why wouldn't you, you like, take that the you're opportunity looking for that. to? Yeah. You're mining that's for that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which was like, you know, just because you, he said this quote, which is like, just because you hear defensive head coach doesn't mean we're going to, you know, like, you know, take three and outs and go back on defense and like try to minimize the stats. Like we're going for it. And like, that's what you want to hear. You know, you like the, the team that I think everybody, the modern team that everybody thinks of, when they're like, you know, the peak of Purdue football, like modern Purdue football is probably that 04 team, which was balanced like offense, 04, 05, mm -hmm. kind of that mm -hmm. era, which was that balanced offensive attack with like a ferocious defense. And that's yeah. what you're kind of hoping. That's, you know, Newber talked about the one great A lot of pros defense. on that defense. A lot of pros on that defense. And, and the one Man. great defense that Newbert's covered. Um, and so it's like, yeah, I, I would like to try and see this. So, uh, yeah, sure. We'll we'll interact with everybody in the comments that has talked about the Jim Sorge jersey, and we're good. Yeah. Well, um, mercy. Uh, so, do you guys feel? Can we? Uh, are you completely happy right now with the hire? Are you uh, moderately happy? Are you wait and see happy? Like, what's your what's your just? 
I think this is like B plus, you know, okay. and, you know, given the offensive, like I'd like to see the offensive coordinator, you know, mm-hmm. um, like, and even then it would probably kind of, you know, unless it's kind of, you know, Graham Harrell or something like that. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. it'll probably remain at a B plus. Um, but like, because there's still, you know, I'm thrilled with this, but it's not, it's not Kalen DeBeer. It's not Chris Kleiman, right? It's not sure. a proven commodity. And so there's still risk, but you know, Bother Dad, this is what you you know you're you're razzing me about um, why I love the NBA and the yeah. NBA draft season, and it's like you see the potential, and it's like you these are the you guys. you love potential. You're a potential guy. He said that for years, <laughs> and because it's potential. like man, like you see this, it like it'd be so awesome. How fun would it be to be on the ground floor of He's this dream rising star? Yeah. Like you look at like 15 years from now, you look at his thing and you're like, wow, I remember when he got started mm-hmm. at Purdue. Like, isn't mm-hmm. that's like I and want hired like, away by by so, so let me, Alabama's next time. Jay, Jay, you're, you're you're this is a point I really wanted to hit, and I kind of talked yeah. to you guys a little bit about this off the my opinion after listening for the last 24 hours to Ryan Walters talk. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. I think his next step, if things go as I think they will. Okay. So I'm going to, wow, that's a, that's a lot. Well, I just said a lot. If things go as I think they can. Will. Okay? Oh yeah. I, I don't want to get too. We're in, we're already drinking the Goodness, Kool-Aid. We are, we are drinking the Kool-Aid. Then if things what? go as well as they can go, I think Walter's next stop is an NFL head coaching position, not a college position. Whoa. And, yeah, man. Yeah, and so that is a, that's a major leap I've taken. <laughs> and so, so the whole thing that and 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 here here's the next thing. A lot of people will be like, "Oh, damn it!" You know, three four years from now, because that's the way I look at the time. You, you're okay with him going to the NFL? Oh yeah, because that means multiple. Guys, we've dreams. got our ten win seasons. Yes, yes exactly. We've got our 10 right. win seasons. Dream what are you talking about? True. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> if here's the thing, though, let's be real honest. If he puts in, let's pretend for a second, let's fast forward, and he gets him to seven or eight wins next year. That's the nuts. world, holy crap. Are you going to have people? No, that would be, that would be unbelievable. unbelievable. I mean, you double, you, you legitimately like you, like 50% raise at that point. Right? Oh, yeah. I, mean, I would like think you so. Yeah, you jump him up to Brom money it. right away. Yeah. Because he's um, the guy. Oh, yeah. no. Against against next year's schedule, too. Sorry, Jay. Like, you have yeah. your grades. Go ahead. No, no. I Yeah, I, I agree. That would be uh, – I, I, I'm – I'm my grade, yeah, I, I I mean, I think you guys – I'm in the same place as you. I'm, I'm, I'm excited by the potential. Anish, that's a good analogy. It's like it, what I'm excited for, I'm trying to temper my excitement on is his ability to recruit. Because I have this feeling, just the way he walks into a room, and again, we yeah. don't know, we're not in yeah. recruiting conversations, but think about the way he carries himself versus some of the, even the good Purdue coaches. Like, Joe Tiller wasn't, like, in love with recruiting. Jeff Brom probably was a really good recruiter, but, he, but he's not the most personable guy, right? He's kind of awkward socially. I'm sure he's better than he is in front of the press conferences. This guy feels like the kind of guy, like, he feels like the kind of guy that the players end up just loving because right. of the way that he treats right. them and and approaches them and builds them up and he's the kind of guy i think this is what i'm saying i'm trying to temper this excitement because he feels like the kind of guy that guys are going to want to play for and mm. if you can recruit i mean isn't that a huge part of it in college and if you can recruit at purdue man now we're talking because i mean and all of a sudden right like none of the major defections like or, or none of the major pieces that we wanted next year outside of Spencer Holstage um, has, has left. Right. 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 Like everybody is in like, I wonder if these guys were waiting to see to say, I mean, they were right. They were saying, yeah, because if you go in the transfer portal, they are not guaranteed. You are not guaranteed a scholarship back. And so Hmm. you, what you're better off doing if you're Brady Brom or Brady, Brady Allen, there's the, there's the, uh, you know, slip. Um, if you're Brady Allen, you wait for the, you know, you wait to see who it is. Yeah, exactly. I don't, I wouldn't mind if he picked Brady. Yeah, no, he's a Louisville (laughs) quarterback. Um, but, uh, Brady Allen, you see the coach and then you can, you know, then you have, but you have your kind of insurance policy. There. So, so my gut tells me, and you guys can tell me if I'm wrong, but I believe, especially since Babinski addressed this right away in that presser, he talked about the professionalism of the players kind of keeping quiet, mm-hmm. 
not you know yelling fire, not running around, jumping into the portal, all that stuff. My guess is when he talked to them with closed doors, he said, hey, guys, listen. He told them what you just told them about your scholarship is here right now. Just wait. It'll yeah. if you want to leave, if speaking you want to jump guys, to the exit after this do. decision. Speaking yeah, of guys, speaking of guys who would be comfortable having those conversations too. I mean, like that's the thing. Like Babinski is such a good, like just such a steady hand, mm-hmm. and like that's that's a large part of why I feel good about this too. Is that mm-hmm. it's not it's not a Burke hire. Um, again, like Morgan Burke, lots of good things like ushered Purdue into the modern era. Blah blah blah. But like. You know, like there would have been there were ways that he went about hires like this. And it seems like Babinski is fixing all of those holes. Right. And all of a sudden you've got a real foundation to build on. Um, let me let me um, put in a. A couple a couple sidebar thoughts real quickly, because I there have been a lot of things in the margin that I want to react to and. Um, a lot of things that we've been saying, but one of but these can be kind of wrapped up under an umbrella. I have a friend that's an ex player. Jay knows who I'm talking about. And he probably does right away too, that we interact with a little bit on the DMS and we're buddies. Um, and he gave me a couple things that, that before it all started talking about with Colvin, people talked about Ro- Roosevelt Colvin never met Jeff Brom, which is crazy to me. Okay. Weird. Really weird. Really weird, okay? But this ex-player, I'm not going to give you his name because I don't want to throw him under the bus. I don't want to incriminate him in any way. But he said <clears throat> there were not good ex-player relations with the Brom, generally, generally, mm-hmm. with the the Brom era and, and these guys who played. It doesn't matter if it was Tiller or if it was uh, Coletto or Akers or whoever. There just weren't great relations. He said there were a couple guys that, that – Brom would say, hey, could you come talk to him? Obviously, Breeze was a big deal to Jeff Brom, right? He had him come back for pregames and stuff like that, mm-hmm. okay? Um, but he also said something to me that I thought was incredible, or that, I mean, something that we thought, but maybe we didn't put it into words, and that was he was always let down. He said Jeff Brom was so good at getting the team <clears throat> up for the big game, but he wasn't consistent enough to win the games he was supposed to every time. And that's kind of like what we thought with these letdown games that happen every year. Okay. But this is an ex player. He looks at the game a little bit different. I think he's a fan at this point because he's older and, um, you know, maybe is not as tight end, obviously. But I thought those were interesting observations and just from a, from a guy who has a different perspective than I do. This guy is not only an ex player, he's played pro football, he's, uh, he's a mammoth human being. Where but, I'm but these are the, these are the wide. types of things that you forgive when, Digging mm-hmm. a program mm-hmm. out of such a hole that Purdue was in and when you're winning, like when you're doing so successfully. Right. And yeah. so that's the other, like, that's the flip. Like if Brahm was doing this without winning, like with right. four and five win seasons the entire time, like then it would be unforgivable. Right. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. we got these moments. We've got, we had a, we had a really, really good, successful, undeniably great six year run. Mm-hmm. And so, but when you when you're talking about, I think taking a program to the next level, this is what you're trying to do. You're trying to pull it. So you've rebuilt the foundation, behind the scenes and on the field, and now you're hoping that this is the guy that kind of ties everything in. Shows that you can win at Purdue in a different way. Shows that a strong defense can play at Purdue. A strong, reliable, consistent defense can play mm-hmm. at Purdue. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, like Purdue starts to become like synonymous with that. Wisconsin. Team. I mean, again, like we we aren't aiming for these are realistic expectations for a power two team. We're not aiming for where, you know, Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State are. You know, Penn State is kind of in that nebula. They're in that weird nebula of like they're not quite there, but they're above Wisconsin. We're aiming for that Wisconsin. They're above think, Wisconsin just because they're legacy, right? They're and they've done program, yeah, they're, right? they've done it. They have more resources. All of this, right? When you're recruiting to Wisconsin versus Penn State, it's like you know there there is a there is a real gap there, right? We are aiming for that that Wisconsin leap, and this is the guy that can do that. I think. Like this is the type of swing that you make on it on a lead, and that that's the other thing that you're really hoping that Babinski got right, which was it's not just a schematically great guy. You're hoping for that program guy. Like you're not hired. You hired Brom because he's a great like schematics, like X's and O's guy. 
And he X's and O's us like offensively out of the depths of where Hazel was, right? Mm -hmm. You're you're hiring a guy like Walter is not just for the X's and O's on defense. You're hiring him for that program building perspective. Yeah, exactly. Like you're hoping you got that young CEO. Mm -hmm. And so it's like fingers crossed. Like it feels like they've got that young CEO to me. That's the big takeaway that I have over the last 24 hours is that when you hear Newbert talking who, um, I, he I like Newbert. Newbert was skeptical. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we, if you read what Newbert was saying early, he was well, not yeah. all in. No. He was not all in. And then 24 hours later, he talked about the way he interacts with people. That was Newbert's big tipping point, I think, right? He just said, watch the way this guy works a room and the way he interacts with people, the way he engages with people. And that's that CEO thing, right? That's the thing that is so important. Um, the thing that I thought was interesting, tell me if you guys disagree, is he talks to different groups differently. And I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. He talked to the players with a different mm-hmm. pace and a different vocabulary a little bit than he did the press room. Oh, yeah. Is that being disingenuous or is that being smart? No, I mean, that? so that's kind of what, well, that's kind you of what CEO. I do. Well, your audience. That's what, and right. also, right. you know, for, I mean, like, we'll, we'll be, again, we'll be. Yo, what's frank up, about fellow this. young peoples? <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's code switching. Like, I tell, you know, I can tell, I can tell when, you know, me and, like, I can tell when my mom's talking to somebody else versus talking to us, right? Well, you speak like, a different language. So that's, well, that's yeah, how I can exactly. tell you're talking to that's mom versus right. me. Yeah, right. exactly. And so it's like, you're, you're, you're really like you, you, um, you know, in a sport that is so dominated by like if we talk about this out loud young black men and there are so many coaches that do not match that profile it's like you know we keep talking about like why do the same guys the same like unremarkable guys keep getting these jobs these are big multi-million dollar jobs this is that club that we're talking about And Mm -hmm. if Purdue can be even just taking a swing on a guy like this at a moment like this, when we could have had Dan Mullen, when we could have had, oh, who some the disaster, I thought that would have the disaster that I was afraid of was Todd Munkin. Oh, yeah. I thought Todd Munkin was the exact you. So you thought he was the worst case scenario of our. You could learn all of the wrong (laughs) lessons if you if you are Purdue and you take all of this Big Ten money and you hire Todd freaking Munkin, like his years at Georgia, the Death Star. We are at. They are the next Alabama Death Star. They they really are. Decade. They're that's them. Yeah. If you think you can learn anything from them and apply it to Purdue. Other than how to get a forty million, fifty million dollar buyout, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> right, and so think, to about, me, think about the oh. resources you get at Georgia and how different of a game that was. That was kind of my point about people were upset. Some people were upset about my thinking Clawson was a good candidate. But the reason I looked at it is Wake Forest is a tough place to win. Oh, I can't get would have. Oh, that I would so have loved Clawson. I would right. have loved a lot of similarities. He's proven I mean, he can do what he need to do at Purdue. Period. We yeah. put the guys right. in. We put the six guys in our top tier for that reason. Go succeed mm-hmm. at Iowa State. Go succeed at Kansas State. Win ten Hard. games Hard. at Syracuse. Head coach. Win wins. ten games at Syracuse. Win eleven games at Wake Forest. Yeah. yeah. Like, Good luck, man. That's these hard are the stuff. guys. And so the 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 point is like why. You know, you if you can't get one of those guys that can prove that you can do it at a place like this, and you take the big ten bag of cash and you put it Brinks truck and you back it up, why not expand the club, and why not say the universally praised kind of uh, you know rising star in coaching? Say, yeah, come to Purdue. You know why? Because we're confident that we have the resources to help you, you know, uh, build up kind of your career to take the first major step, and we're confident enough that. Yeah, you can be, you know, Purdue can be the, the place that can expand the club here and not just say, hey, Dan Mullen, come, you know, take your $6 million, $7 million retirement job. Like, I am I am glad that we're not going with the standard 50-year-old white guy, yeah. old, retread, oh, I love recycled hire, right? Oh, and I so that's, that that's also, like, again, I'm putting my cards on the table here, which is these are my biases. This is where I want Purdue to lean. And this is where I want Purdue pushing the sport. You know, Purdue 
Purdue's legacy right now has been like, you know, ushering basketball on grass. I would love it if Purdue's modern legacy was being able to win at Wisconsin levels football and being and being the yeah, exactly. Foot, yeah, exactly. Football on grass. <laughs> <laughs> And be one of those places that can say, yeah, anybody can come here. Like we are willing to expand the club. Anybody can come here, showcase their, ta- showcase their talents because that's the place that, that we, you know, little old West Lafayette is. Right you know, now. We always come up with shirt ideas that we never put into production. Football and yeah. grass. It's Football perfect. And grass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, well, like, three quarters of the people, people would see the it would be like, what right. the heck? Exactly. But the it would be better. Would, they'd be like, oh, ag school. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, no, that's not, no, that's not, not the not joke. Much. There's more than um, the joke. By the way, I, there's been a lot. There's a, as always a lot of comments I'd love to address. Can't get to them all. Nathan Hartman is being a little bit of a stick in the mud down there, and he made a comment when we were just rattling off what some of these top tier in our coaching mm-hmm. ranks tier guys did. He said, "What about winning ten games at Kent State?" He's obviously referring to Daryl Hazel. Let me just be, let me just address that one. First of all, Daryl Hazel, I believe, coached two, two years seasons. at Kent State. He won like six or four or something the first year. Then he won four. ten. Yes. Yeah. That is not sustained excellence at a place that's like Purdue. Our point no, was who is the guy who owes him his million years? A little scat back. What was that guy's right. name? That's the guy who yep. made. I don't, his name. I don't remember his I name. I do. He's an years. NFL guy. He was an NFL guy. He's very yeah, good. Right. Two, yeah. he, was he was really but, good. But it was trestle my, ball. I mean, like he was an offensive guy, but it was trestle ball. And yeah, again, it's like didn't, their it was not offensive. It was offensive. That that Kent State. Look it up. That Kent State offense was terrible. They lucked into 10 wins. And they had all these I, weird things with fumbles that happened. They were yeah. like plus everything bounced 12. their way. That year. Everything, went everything. Their way. And my point is that Dave Clawson has done that at nine years at a power five school that is very similar in profile. And Archer, to Purdue. That Archer is dry point. Archer. Thank you. A H H Coldy. And, and I mean, the other, <laughs> dry Archer, dry Archer, yeah. the other part of that is that you can take a, a bad to mediocre coach that's why, like, I think if you would have put Daryl Hazel at Wisconsin, I think it would have done just fine. I think it would have done exactly Paul Christ, because you mm-hmm. have that, you have that foundation oh, exactly. You see, you see Paul Christ's face. Wisconsin's going to be so good, man. I'm so. Upset. It's such a disaster. They're going to be it so up. good over the next oh, couple of years. Their oh. offensive coordinator. I was like, yeah, why don't they go get Phil Lungo from UNC? Try to see if Purdue can get him. Oh, he's already oh, been wait. hired by freaking Damn Wisconsin. It. Yeah, exactly. It's a disaster. Is- Speaking of people trying to take that mini leap, like Wisconsin trying to be on Penn State's par, and like you know, take that Wisconsin or uh, Michigan Ohio State leap. Like, ooh, Wisconsin is ready, and yeah. that's not great. Yeah, so hey, uh, there's a, there's a request. People are clamoring for this right now, Anish, and, and you can make the decision if you want to talk it. Greg Greg McManus is also involved. He's on the stream right now too. Indeed. But there is a great story that has not been publicly aired and not been publicly <laughs> talked about. Oh, from just two days ago. That's awesome. So the, so I'm gonna can I can I set it up and then yeah. you tell the rest? Yeah. Okay. So Greg is in the margin. So this is another real human than saw it. So there's, there's a witness. There's two witnesses here. Okay. Sorry. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. This is when the uh, Tyson Helton rumors were boiling. They were almost over the edge of your pot. Tyson Helton is going to be your next Purdue football coach. It was, blah, 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 blah. it was happening all the time, right? We thought it was a done deal. It might. So this is done deal. And, and a niche and Greg McManus were in a thread on Twitter, Anish, take it away. So I, Greg tweets out, like, you know, talking about um, our, our Lincoln correspondent, our Lincoln, Nebraska correspondent, very important yeah. position here at Boiled Sports. Very um, important. I mean, like, we, you know, how else do you think we have all of these talking points? I mean, we have our Lincoln, mercy. we pay our Lincoln correspondent. <laughs> um, so, you know, he was tweeting out, like, all these rumors are getting out of hand, like alluding to Shane Beamer and alluding to Tyson Helton. Like, those were just the two names that kept coming up and coming up. Um, and a certain volleyball coach at a certain Midwestern, you know, Northern Indiana program just replies to him just completely out of the blue and says, Helton, Helton. <laughs> and like 38 seconds later deletes the tweet. And it's like, wait, and, and 
And I, Aisha's screen grab fingers weren't all. I know. Up. I didn't. I I didn't no realize. No Greg's. I. No, it doesn't. It's it's vaporized into the ether. But that was in the depths of the Baba Yaga thread on Knucklehead Central, which will live on in infamy because, like, wow, was that a? Oh, so was it was. It was on GBI. It wasn't on Twitter. It was no. So it was on, but. All of these rumors were swirling out of right. the message boards, right. but it was on Twitter and neither Greg nor I caught it in time. And so Greg and I were like, wait, does he know? Has he already been clued in? Is it just misdirection? What's going Did he on? Did not get the entire message typed? Yeah, exactly. Was there a question? The under yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. Is this his safe word? What's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. Well, the funny thing is, so 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 you guys started talking about and alluding to this. Uh, assume the, yeah, okay, yeah. So Greg Amanda says, I assume he forgot the question mark and realized his error and deleted it. And so, meanwhile, yeah. Greg was going through like you remember Hugh Jackman and Swordfish, where he's just like standing, typing intense, just clearly typing gibberish intensely at like looking at the screen, pretending right. like he's hacking into it. Greg was trying to trying like, to figure hack out how to try to look up how do you look up the movie tweets? reference on the Hansen Hour. That's no boy, we are so, so good hard. with the modern. Uh, references. That the I, kids watched, know. I watched. I so watched Rush Hour two twice in the last it's week. So good. So did good. You lose Rush Hour two is so good. What? Why did you do me, that? It's me, me and my brother watch it all the time. I watched it twice. Rush Hour two specifically. Week. Rush Hour two specifically. Rush, Rush Hour, Hour one, two and Men in Black two. So. Oh, I mean, like no, yeah, of course it is. It's yeah, better. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's a terrible movie, yes. but I love it. I love it yeah, so my much. Wife anyway, could you? Mrs. Boiler Dab loves it. Um, yeah, but so. So Greg reaches out to me via direct message and references this thing. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. So I had to go back and get filled. Uh, it's, it was, a uh, it was a strange weekend. Again, I, I, you know, boiler dad, you were talking about it. Like, I'm not sure what some Purdue, how much more quickly some Purdue fans wanted the hire to be made. Um, you know, Jeff Brown was introduced as the head coach, you know, on, on Wednesday morning, or no, Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday at four. And um, Mike Babinski went on at 4.30 and like, you know, was talking about like, we're going to interview people. And then Tuesday, the following Tuesday, he's got his head coach. And then Wednesday morning is the, you know, is the press conference, right? Um, you know, Monday is when we knew Louisville would open. And, you know, I know that it, it was a strange, I, it was a strange reaction that Tom Dienert had to the news that, um, you know, Mike Babinski was like, name your years, name your price that Brom brought up at Louisville. Um, I don't think that that came off as begging. I think that came off as like, what do you need us to do? Like, yeah. we're, did you hear like, that? The other side of that story, there's more to that too. What is it? Yeah, go ahead. The other side of that story. Cause Brom said that, right. That's his quote. Right. Which I think makes, per I, I okay. actually think that makes Purdue look good. They were like, but wait, we're it, it does. It makes Purdue look good. makes Louisville look good. makes everybody look good. The problem is it's not true. And well, I don't... GBI said it's not true because yeah. they heard it's not true from a, the best source, uh, Babinski. From... He said he didn't. It didn't happen. I, really? I wonder and if so, – like, So then I'm like – why, Jeff? Why do that? Because you know that's because it makes stories. everybody look. I mean, it honestly, makes Babinski better. look good. It makes everybody look like you know Purdue is a high major program. He's not leaving it because of money. It's like you're taking the entire like because there were national people that were like it's home and there's money there because Louisville. You think the NIL money and you think it's right. there. It's like it's it's the money thing. And like that takes that completely out of the thing. Like I actually, you know, whatever. Like I, I, I you like the story more than reality is what you're going to say. It's I don't fun. care if I don't care <laughs> if if Ryan Walters wasn't at the Rose Bowl parade. I don't care. Please feed me you this like, yeah. delicious, delicious poison. I, love I had it. a friend. I had a friend who was the son of a pastor like of a folklore. church that I attended. Okay, he was in his late teens. And he would tell me before the, the, the son oh, was he would tell me before the message, we'd meet in the lobby and we talk because he was in my small group and he'd say, uh, dad's got a humdinger today and I'm going to tell you much of it is true. <laughs> so he'd say, this is great story. That's it. It's a good story. And most of it him. is right. It's, it's a good it, story. It dances around the truth. They, they were paying me. They would have probably paid me more. That. 
is essentially them saying, here's a blank check. Well, so, but here's the flip side of that. If Brom came to them and said, yeah, I'm on the fence, like, you know, if you, they if would it's say like what seven would and a half take? million, if it's yeah. like seven and a half million dollars, but I think both of them knew that it wasn't like, they both, both of them it wasn't knew. about that. I think, like, I yeah. think his point was the second half of that sentence was like him and Mike Pavinsky both knew. I want to niche as my lawyer. Then they gave that's, that's, each other lovingly and said, run, fly away. We've had, Lord. we've had good <laughs> times. It's hard to like exactly. a cardinal flutter south. It was the friends we made on the way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the friends we made in Morgantown, which is being torn down. Everyone's gleefully oh, posting way. pictures of it being brought down. Not so much to tear down. I think once you take the tents down, you're done. That's it. We could do it in it. about two hours, guys, the three of us. <laughs> You've torn it down. We- it's over. Yeah. Just take the beer taps. Now that weird other ticket that you had in your booklet that said you can get in with this and then you can purchase some things. What? Yeah, what? it's a special ticket to another beer tent. <laughs> what there a was, gift. There what was, a gift. Two thirds of which you can't there, access. There was right. nothing redeeming about that area. No. And you couldn't even watch the Except game for the murder she wrote on TV. What did you guys say? It was no. Law and Order. It was Law, law and Order. order. Sorry. The murder, murder she wrote. wrote. <laughs> Murder She Wrote is funnier. I think I may change it for this story. I may change it to Murder She Wrote. Yeah, you can make it Murder She Wrote. You can make it LA Law. That would also work. That would be funny because it's so old. Um, Yeah. Uh, I think Jay Buddy was telling a story about Us Weekly being US Weekly. That's just very funny to me. I don't know why LA I don't know why LA Law made me think of that. Well, but now that you brought that up. La Law. La Law. La Law. Well, it's now French. you brought that up. La 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 it turns out that Michael thought that on three was O N three. And I explained to him, I'm like, Michael, sometimes when they break the huddle, they go on three. On three. Exactly. And he had no idea. And I, so yeah, that's big athlete, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Wherever you are, Michael. There's you are. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. It's safe to say he's never going to hear this because I'm pretty sure yeah, Michael he, doesn't he doesn't review the podcast. <laughs> yeah. He'll yeah. He's busy writing up. Point. He's busy getting ready to podcast about the number one basketball team. The Daily. I'm sure the, the basketball beat. The Daily. The, the, the Daily basketball beat. The DBB. <laughs> yeah, that's the kids right. Are calling the, it. the DBB. <laughs> we did hire him, Nathan. Nathan says you bozos hired him. <laughs> that's true. That's we right. did do that. Huge signing bonus, too. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> like, yeah, it's all gone because he's he's frivolous with his, with his BS uh. money. He bought. Oh. He, he's a rancher. He brought. He bought all. What do ranchers right. buy? Cattle? He bought a, he bought a pole barn with yeah. uh, with a bench press and many <laughs> That's many right. racks of. He's getting like a jacked. car lift yeah, and man. like a computer and a fifty gallon drum or something. It's like the most haphazard thing. <laughs> it's Michael. Right. You've seen Michael. It's Michael. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's good. <laughs> Uh, uh, so we're feeling good. We feel, we're feeling. Oh, I think I think it's universal. We feel good. I think that's I think that's true. And I hope I yeah. hope that we've spread a little joy to the to the people that are listening, pe- making them feel a little bit better when they walk away. But more than that, you know what I want them to do when they leave here? Do Head over to Martin them. Vintage. Yeah. Get a T-shirt. Get a sweatshirt. Enter Boiled at checkout. Fifteen percent off. <laughs> and if they're in, because many of these people are listening on campus, many oh, many. Absolutely. There's a lot of sororities. This is what they do. Whenever we're of course, this is probably that signal goes up. They all gather around the radio, the internet radio. <laughs> and if you're at one of those sororities, go over to AJ's on Vine. Before you go, go to eataj's.com, pre-order, get your burgers, beef, and beer. Great for your See? figure. Yes, exactly. How, how do you think I maintain this physique? Look at I go you. to AJ's. You're wonderful and delicious. <laughs> oh. Yeah, slick segue. Nathan Hartman says that's not a segue. This is me thinking what I do. This is all it's just gonna. It's an ad read. Natural man. happens. I don't even have to read it. It's no, all the old all noggin up here. More than a hat rack up here. Uh, yeah, we should probably talk. I, you know how how normalized it's become that Purdue basketball is excellent. One of the modern blue bloods. That we just took an one. hour and twenty three minutes and haven't talked about it. We haven't mentioned that? that the fact the fact that Matt Painter's crew is number one. By the way, Matt Painter shaking, uh, you know, just perfectly cool. dressed Ryan yeah. Walters, and Matt Painter's just in Looking his like at Matt leisure. Painter. Oh, yeah. look at like <laughs> he's good. got a rack of ribs smoking outside. Somebody, right in the, moment. somebody in the sidebar here pointed out that Matt Painter came over to Purdue right at that age with only a year as a head coach. And was that what else? Hey. Was it Handel that said he was 35 when he was hired? I don't care if it's Handel, I'm not giving him any credit. <laughs> that was a great dude. You get Shut enough love from us, Handel. 
<laughs> oh man, just painter shaking hands with like the, the perfectly met painter. Painter shaking hands with like the perfect looking Ryan Walters. Oh yeah, just so Walters, is, Walters in his head. The thought bubble is like, we're gonna we got some work to do here, coach. <laughs> Come with me. I can, yeah, men's yeah. Bar. And Matt painter the thought bubble, but just like a leg of lamb. I'm hungry. Like <laughs> it is, just, no, it's just it's just the yeah, and painter, and painter's head. He's like, we got to fatten you up, boy. Exactly. Like, come on. Like, come oh, we've we got. I got ribs wow. out back. I got yeah. cornbread going. Let's go, man. Yeah, that's. I uh, think, if I anybody, respect. by the way, we we had a long conversation with our buddy Chris Harder, and I think Greg McManus was in it as well, and saying they're going to call in, and the question is going to be to Matt Painter about smoking meat. If one of you guys don't do this this week, Please. I'm going to be very let down because Please. Paint will love it. Oh, he will up. love that question. He will eat it up. Literally. No, he won't. He'll be sad that he's not eating it up. Right <laughs> our dude, our dude loves smoking the meats. Hey, there's a good basketball team too, but who cares? Hey, so here's the deal. This is probably one of the best things that could have happened for the basketball team. Think about oh, yeah. it. Nobody's looking at him. Everybody's over right. here. We're we'll like, over. Right, what's going to happen over there? And then the basketball team's like, we're number one. We're like, cool. That's great. You were number one last year. Tell me something else. Exactly. We've already I want won. to hear about I the offensive you. coordinator. I told you guys we've already won November and December. Matt Painter has already won January and Your February chance. in past years. That's it. We've only months. got two more months of the, of the hard basketball calendar. <laughs> March and April. That's it. <laughs> Wait, where did we see? Where did we see? Um, Butler, where were you guys? Would you guys see him compared to Jerry West on the? Oh, that was that was the beautiful knucklehead boards. Does he look like a certain logo? (laughs) It's like, are we talking John Deere? What logo are we talking about here? I said said Shaquille O'Neal, Michael Jordan. um, Which which logo are we talking about? A very well known basketball logo, I assume. Oh yeah. yeah, I didn't go outside the industry. I did not go to John Deere. I'm sorry. Yeah, no. He does run like a deer. He's tireless. Yes. Oh yeah. Coach on the floor. To, yeah. Eat, yeah. Uh, cerebral. Yeah. In Cerebral. fact, it's, oh, heady, heady God, guy. I love this. I love, I really, I can't believe, love comes from strange places, and I can't believe I'm head over heels for Fletcher Lawyer. It, he would have been the last person on this. I mean, I love Zach. Eady. Everybody loves Zach. Like his defense. Oh, it's so good. This Where did thing. it come from? But it's, Where did it come from? I'm not trying to be funny. I asked you guys this. Was this, was this, he learned it all from the Canadian national coaches. They don't even know how to play basketball up there. They just <laughs> like they didn't even have a national team Which he right knows until how to do. what 2016. Am I right about that, guys? I'm not big on my sports history, but I assume they didn't have a basketball so, team. Until two give or take. Yeah. They hadn't give discovered or take. the sport yet. Right. <laughs> exactly. It took a while to get north of the you know north of the border. Never mind. When don't it look did, up, man. Don't look up where now. Don't look up where Jim Naismith is from. Or James no, Naismith that's not. That's not Jim, like that. me, Jim and Jim, me and Jim Naismith. Jim We're on first day basis. Jim Naismith. <laughs> <laughs> Big old Jim. Wow, oh, look at this. Dil- look Jim. who's here. Dylan checks in at one hour and 27 minutes. Hey, no, so what'd you talk about? Earlier. He was uh, in at the beginning. Good. He said uh, something at the beginning. So I love this basketball team. I love Fletcher. I can't believe how much I love Fletcher Lawyer. This is great. Let's keep it. You love him more because he's good, or because he's good and he looks like what he does. No, it's I can't believe. Like I can't believe how poised he is. I cannot believe it. Do you hear Painter being surprised at him dunking? Yeah, yeah. He's like, I've never seen him dunk. I didn't know he could do that. (laughs) Awesome. <laughs> but like i can't believe how ready he is to drive i can't believe how confident he is in his handle he's not even shooting like he, he hadn't even made threes yet like you know he's making it he's gonna like have a, 30, a game this year where 34 seven percent or eight clip. threes i'm not kidding i think that's he'll it. Do that like, this year he's he a, hasn't he's a even, beast he hasn't even eclipsed 35 percent. i don't think on the year yet yeah like he's not even shooting like he should be and just like his presence, like every Braden Smith, great. Everybody knew, like, I mean, you know, um, not everybody knew he was gonna be good. No, 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 meaning like it, I, it's obvious, it's so obvious yeah. that he is, yeah. he's filling a role, filling such a big need, and he's doing so like really well. It's, it's like obviously praiseworthy. Like yeah. to me, it's like every time I watch Fletcher Lawyer, I'm like, what, where did What's you come happening? from? What is, what this? is the, yeah, exactly. What is this? Braden Smith was Mr. Basketball. I get it. But you, what is, what is this? Oh, I saw so these good. highlight reels. It was just like lawyer had this super quick release and it was pure. 
Yeah, and I was beautiful like, that's show. what I was waiting to see. And I thought he was going to be like roll guy coming in like the summer. I thought he would red shirt. Mm. I thought it was almost certain that he would do the Ryan Smith, Ryan Klein red shirt. Yeah, I always tell people Anish knows everything, but it turns out that it might not be true. I see, even me, even, even me. Even Anish. That's my knowledge. That's if right. That's that's right. That's awesome. when, does, when does he play his brother? Saturday? Is that what's Saturday? Yep. Davidson. In Indianapolis. <laughs> In oh, that's the, right. The uh, indie classic. CNO, I, is it me or is, is nothing being Lucas made Loyal. of the fact that two brothers are playing against each other? I think that's kind of a cool You thing. love it. It's your, like your favorite thing this year. You've I do love it. But yeah. nobody's, I haven't said it a lot. I don't understand why you no said one's. said to us it. a lot. I, I like, I like this matchup. Yeah. Oh, they'll, 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 you know, uh, talk. But his brother was at, where Saturday. was his brother? He was at Wisconsin? Nope. Michigan, Michigan State. State. Michigan State. Yeah. So, Right, so that's like, oh, he lives Michigan State, so they're not going to play each other. And look at that, Davis. Yeah, it's perfect. Schedule. It works perfectly. Yeah. How it works out. Oh, it's, you I, think, it's I'm not trying to be funny, and I haven't heard this answer because I heard an interview with both of them. They're like, "This is pretty fun. We're looking forward to playing." But you don't think that that was part of his choice? It was like, "Oh, maybe we'll get to play against each other." I haven't heard that that part. Also, also, this is something going back to Jay and I being old, and us being close to the age of a player's dad. Their dad looks exactly like a composite of them which is wild to me like it looks genetics like, man it's crazy it's wild though i mean like some genetics like i don't look like my dad i really don't like i sound like him but i don't look like him i mean it's crazy how much they look like their dad their dad also is an ex nba something he was he worked in the nba uh, that was another one where michael's just complete disconnect of reality he said he's got to be in his 60s he's got two kids in college we're like, like what are you talking what about? is that that? And that's what How I replied. I said, you? Neil Ivy is 45. <laughs> God damn. And her son's in the NBA. Yes. <laughs> was Ryan, Walter's dad, lawyers... Ryan Walter's dad is just, you know, in his early 50s and, yeah. you know, his 36 year old that's son. That's the coach's is, dad. You know, We're not talking about yeah. a player's dad. That's yeah. the difference with that one. That's why you get, it's weird. old. It's old. I've now. gotten it's accustomed to your like, hip stretches. The parents of the players being, you know, our age. That's fine. Take your arthritis medicine. It's fine. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I've been preempt- preemptively taking some Advil recently. I'll be honest. Like, it's got to take a little snack because it hurts your kidney. So I'll have that snack just to yeah, for health like, purposes. Yeah, like have an M&M bowl and you have yeah. some Advil in there. Nom, 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 nom. Yeah. Sprinkle some on your noodles. Down. It's a good thing. Yeah. Sprinkle some on your noodles like Parmesan cheese. Yeah, very good. Very what? Good. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Ground up aspirin. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Well, it, guys, it's been fun. We're, we're an hour and a half. Um Really appreciate everybody tuning in live. I appreciate everybody listening to it taped as well. Um, I tape. I, I pre- laugh every time you say big, taped. Big time. wheels turning. <laughs> no, exactly. That's Hold on. Is, he's going to change the wheel. I, I've never thought about how stupid that is that I say it recorded. <laughs> oh, I'm old. Okay. So, yeah. So, thanks for tuning in taped. If you're tuning listening in. on 8-Track or Cassette. Too. Or really uh, anywhere anymore. go to the yeah, BS store to buy one of the these just before Christmas. We'll get yeah, it to you. You oh, can fit a can. We actually got an order. I gotta get that sent out. So if you order right from now, us, the the BS fulfillment group is is is, is <laughs> working actually, as you can it's see right, right here somewhere. I gotta find right it. Here. Go get it. You get enter enter something at checkout and you enter can get some percent check it out. Boiled. Come 20, on, twenty or twenty five percent off, Jay. Yo, off. the perfect Christmas gift. It's indestructible. The last thing we sent you was very this destructible. Is <laughs> Let me not tell you. It was destructible. Exactly. It was very extremely destructible. <laughs> I struck many of them. You struck quite a few, exactly. I literally worry uh, every time I put them in the dishwasher that one of these guys is going to go down. To I told you every time I broke, like I broke my um, my pint glass. That was the old oaken bucket. Like I, I broke the. There was another Purdue pint glass, and that one it was all while I washed them. Like well, if I was there's somebody who seriously them. asked the question. I don't, I don't think they're kidding. South Haven Boiler says seriously, where's the BS store? Go to boiledsports.com. Dot boiledsports.gov. It's on the site. Just you go to boiledsports.com right Boiled at the top. There's, store. A, there's a clickable link right at the top where the 20% discount is bragged about. Correct, Jay? I think yes, you can click you, there. And, and you super. scroll just below the video, and there you just click Boom. on this guy. There's a picture of this guy, not with yep. my face behind it. Right there. Nope. But it's exactly. right here. But you can look as handsome as – no, no, you won't. You won't look as handsome as Anish when he's holding it. But you'll look good. You'll look good. It's not bad. Um, but, yeah, so so head, head, over, to, uh, head over to our uh, OnlyFans site. Buy yourself a, a can koozie slash uh, coffee. What's this say? I just put boiled and check out for every online store I shop just in case. Yeah, we've got relationships with so many sponsors. Everywhere. Mm-hmm. Nike. Everywhere. 
We yeah. once got accused. This is not a joke by somebody saying you guys are clearly profitable because all of your sponsors. This is not a joke. This happened. But it's and not, I said no, you don't not, know we're, we're, how little we're already money. an hour and a half into this. Yes. This but is you a don't very, know how little money boiled sports is worth. For you everybody really here, this is a very real trigger for all three of us. Holy and we moly! Could go down a real, a real like bad anger, rabbit some hole. real emotions here. It, yeah. This is a real story. Yes, oh. This. But so I that. think we're all feeling good. We're all feeling yeah. real good about Ryan Walters. We're all feeling real good about Ron Walters. Boilermaker. Ryan Walters. Oh. Um, Ron we're Walters feeling real good. <laughs> Ron Walters. Uh oh, getting a fax. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, what's going on? I'm Buddy Ron Gable. The mail label. label. We've, we've got, got VHS tapes. Of this. Yeah, yes. we've got VHS tapes happening at Boiler Dad's house. We've got yeah. fax machines at yeah. yours. What's I've got cameras set all up all over my house, so you can you can buy. All sorts of things. I bet you do. Oh, feet right. picks. Boiler dad feet picks. That's stuff. right. They're gross. <laughs> they look like a damn hobbit. Okay, that's enough. That's it. That's it. I love you guys. Good night. Adios. <laughs>